In this presentation, we're going to consider gardening methods using raised beds and grow boxes. This will be broken into two parts, the advantages and disadvantages of raised beds and grow boxes, and different techniques for building them, different kinds of plants that grow well using raised beds and grow boxes. So what is the difference between a grow box and a raised bed? Well, grow boxes are used for container gardening. These can be anything from pots to boxes to elevated tables. Um, they can be done even on concrete. Raised beds, on the other hand, are usually on the ground and take advantage of the soil below the box. They're usually in a row, much like in a garden. So let's look into grow boxes. What actually is a grow box? Now this pictured grow box is actually a commercial product called a grow box. And what makes this one interesting is it has not only a place to plant your plants, and you'll notice it's on gravel, it's not on dirt, uh, but it has that little spigot in the front that allows you to pour water in to water the roots uh, without wasting water. This is the same grow box, and you'll notice this time it's sitting on a deck. So in both cases, this grow box is not sitting on the ground, taking advantage of the soil underneath the box. You can even have a grow box up on legs, like in this example. As long as uh, you have adequate room, sunlight, moisture, and soil that is will sustain them, you can grow in virtually any type of grow box you can purchase or build. Uh, you'll notice this one is a grow box in the window behind a kitchen sink, for example. Grow boxes are ideal for small living spaces such as apartments. And in this particular case, they have this pot, large pot sitting on a back deck, looks like. And uh, you'll notice it has herbs, uh, all kinds of herbs, all in one pot nicely labeled. Uh, these pictures show different ways that you could have grow boxes in an apartment in tight spaces taking advantage of whatever space there is from being in a window to being on a deck to being stacked on a rack or stacked as on the lower left with lots of vegetation, a wall of vegetables. Uh, grow boxes can be uh, outdoor on patios and decks. Um, a person can even grow vegetables in a high-rise apartment in the city on their deck. This one you can see from the uh, background picture that it's quite a ways off the ground and they have taken well advantage to their uh, growing space with not only pots along the bottom and around the end and uh, a little tree against the wall, but I like how they have these pots hanging from the handrails even. So you can grow vegetables in your apartment even without a patio, such as in this picture putting the pot in the window. You can also stack grow boxes. This is a pretty creative wooden one that has multiple layers, including on the top. Um, this one's quite creative. This is a rain gutter gardening method that you'll notice these uh, gutters are mounted on the wall <clears throat> and they are capturing the water coming from the gutter. And because the, the gutters are zigzagging down, one pours into the next, pours into the next, pours in, into the next. So it's a self-watering type of approach. Um, and this is... Um, a, another self-watering containment system. They use a gutter underneath the pot to uh, bring the water between the pots. Um, then you can do a, uh, by the way, uh, when you were talking about using gutters, um, our son, um, who lives in Illinois, had a back uh, handrail deck sort of a configuration. Uh, under his deck actually in the daylight basement area and he he mounted where handrails would be um, a couple of rows of gutters which he then put dirt in and put strawberries in and it worked fairly well. 
Um, so let's look at some do-it-yourself, how to make or purchase grow boxes. This particular one is a Rubbermaid box with a lid, a bin, and you drill holes in the bottom and then you use the lid as a tray to catch the water. Here are five gallon pails, buckets, uh, used for growing. Uh, Do-it-yourself uh, flower planter, so here's Here's what was a uh, flower imitation uh, wine barrel kind of a pot, large pot, and it uh, was made into um, uh, something to grow vegetables. And this is called a salad box. This is a, a drawer, looks like, out of an old piece of furniture, made it into a grow box. And in this picture, you'll see they took advantage of usable space, you could say, well, I don't have room for growing vegetables. I, I, you know, well, look at what they did here. They still have room to walk, but they have plants on both sides and even down around the side. So now let's look at raised beds. Uh, raised beds, like I say, are more like a row in a garden, except that the growing space is raised and the bottom of the box is open to the ground. So the plants that are in the raised bed take advantage of the soil in the raised part, but also can put roots down into the ground below. <clears throat> raised beds are easier than in-ground beds. They're easier to plant. You don't have to bend so far. They're easier to weed. You can reach them easy. Uh, easier to water, easier to harvest. Raised beds result in bigger yields, better yields, and smaller space needed. Raised bed have other advantages. Less weeds, because everything's close together. Better watering retention in the areas that have sandy soil. Better drainage for areas that have clay soil, because whether your soil at the ground level is um, sandy or clay, the facts are the soil in the box you imported, and it's appropriate, so it's not too sandy, it's not too clay. Uh, more growing space, more soil, no soil compaction from human feet because you don't walk in your bed like you would in the garden. Uh, warmer weather, uh, the warmer soil allows uh, for an earlier season and the warm soil makes a longer season. Um, it limits bending over to work. To me, that's the biggest advantage is that it's more comfortable. And it all depends on how tall your raised beds are as to how much you've mitigated the need to bend over. Uh, there are some disadvantages. Uh, the extra construction cost, and that can be pretty significant. Um, excessive heat, if, um, if you're in a hot area. And excessive drainage, if you don't have the right kind of so soil and maybe poor air circulation. Um, Here's a picture of a raised bed that is about two feet tall. And uh, it's made out of cedar. And, and, so, and then the walkway has cedar chips, so you're not walking on the dirt directly. Um, here's one that is uh, made out of not cedar, but uh, galvanized uh, corrugated metal with a nice little sill on the top. And here's a creative several ones. This one on the left was made out of bricks on a slant. They're just laid there. And, uh, and then the one on the right is really kind of funky. It's, uh, it looks like bottles that might be cemented to uh, uh, maybe around a tire or something like that. A recycler's uh, dream. The one on the top is uh, made out of cedar with little uh, shelves to put extra pots or to sit on. Um, this technique was one of a friend of mine um, that we thought was pretty cool. Um, he used cinder blocks. They're not mortared together. They're just uh, set there, uh, putting some um, gravel in the corners to stabilize it. And he even put dirt in the uh, remaining uh, openings and planted carrots in those areas. In this particular picture, uh, there are uh, pole beans on the left. Here's another one of those types. This one's got squash. Um, and these raised beds are made out of cedar. These are in a greenhouse. 
which makes it quite nice for walking around and reaching things. And here's a creative design octagonal shape that I found on the internet. I thought it looked pretty cool. And the way they have them arranged, they have an equal sized walkway between them. And this is my neighbor, and I thought I got, a, got permission from them to take a picture because I thought their raised beds were quite creative. They were triangular shapes and uh, different levels. And they also had a rainwater catchment system off of their roof to get rainwater to uh, irrigate their plants. And this is one of those triangles. And I asked my neighbor, I said, what is the deal with the uh, white PVC in the corners? And she said, well, that's so that I can put some uh, uh, ribs in in a bow and put bisqueen over it to make it into a hoop house. Uh, we do have a section on hoop houses and greenhouses on the website, preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com, where we went into in-depth about that. But that's what this is about in her garden, in her raised bed, is by permanently mounting these PVC pipes in the corner, she can just slip her bows in to make her hoop house. And here's a creative one I found on the internet. I don't know where they got these pieces or whether it's a kit, but it seems like a little more extravagant. I um, think this is pretty creative. One of them is an, is an old uh, wine barrel cut in half, and the other is a cattle trough, um, both of which are pretty creative. And if you cut the bottoms out of those containers, then the plant roots could go even down into the uh, virgin soil. So how to build a raised bed. First of all, you need a relatively level location. Uh, then you build the box. Then you, I'd suggest covering the inside of the floor of the box with paper or cardboard to hold back the weeds. And then on top of that, put chicken wire. The chicken wire will uh, help keep moles and those kinds of things from coming up from underneath. <clears throat> then you add the soil, which could be a mixture of compost and steer manure. One of our friends successfully made a mixture of one part of steer manure and uh, four or five parts of compost. <clears throat> then plant your plants, watch them grow, water them, and watch God do his magic and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Now we will switch to plants that grow well in raised beds and grow boxes. Gardening in raised beds. Thinking about how this was done anciently, I'm sure it was done prior to the flood, but and this is where I first kind of became aware of it. A few years ago, we visited the life-size ark construction in Kentucky by Answers in Genesis. It's the largest timber framed construction in the United States and you can see that it had ambient light coming in from the center all the way down through the multiple decks uh, so that there was light that penetrated uh, through the entire hull. Um, but in that one of the levels of the ark had a garden. This was an, a picture of part of the garden that was made with uh, growing boxes and raised beds inside of the ark, receiving light from that upper atrium chamber. And <clears throat> it uh, um, also had flower pots that held, in this case, it was grapes. Uh, so a way that um, the builders of this modern life-size ark uh, thought that perhaps uh, Noah and his family were able to have fresh food on their months-long voyage in the ark during the flood. So some things to consider when you're building your raised bed and selecting plants actually to put in them. Think about growing up versus growing out, um, so using the vertical space. Also choose compact varieties if possible uh, as far as <clears throat> maintaining uh, the maximum amount of space uh, used in your in your grow grow bed, your raised bed. Also, uh, growing in a raised bed gives you the advantage of selecting the soil, rock-free and um, impediment-free for the growing of deep-rooted vegetables like carrots 
and uh, potatoes. Also allows for varying water zones so you can have different water requirements by different plants. And the containment of species of plants that may spread like strawberries or mint uh, in one particular area rather than taking over the whole garden. Pole beans are an excellent choice to bring into a raised bed situation. You can see the vertical trellis that has been constructed in two different ways here on these two beds. <clears throat> you can see that they allow access to both sides of the, of the bed for harvesting, uh, particularly one side. Uh, the tunnel, the vegetative tunnel, is really a neat um, experience. We've done this in our garden with pole beans, Blue Lake in particular, but Kentucky Wonder and Cherokee Trail of Tears are another um, couple of string bean varieties. And it just works out really well for, for growing uh, beans in the vertical space. Another vertical <clears throat> climber is your uh, peas. And you can see on the left with the cattle panel, um, a mature pea climbing variety that's being held in place in addition by some string that helps to keep it from flopping down if it didn't actually attach to the trellis. Another way is using uh, string uh, strung between a series of poles. Um, this garden looks a little on the shady side underneath this redbud tree, um, but it uh, will probably work out fine. In the vertical space, you want to be sure that you orient your vertical space on the north end of your bed so that the rest of your plants can receive maximum sun exposure without being shaded by your vertical um, orientation of your, of your beds. Cherry tomatoes. They mature rapidly and they have both bush and indeterminate varieties. An indeterminate variety continues to grow until it is stopped by either pruning or by um, frost killing, whatnot. Otherwise, it'll continue to grow up. Um, a bush variety, we tried bush variety for the first time this year, and they were good producers. Um, they will grow out over your bed, so take up more space um, in the horizontal aspect of your bed. Uh, but slicer tomatoes typically don't do very well outside because they take longer to mature. They need heat to mature well and get them ready. And then the next thing you know, you get rain here in the Pacific Northwest, which ends up um, knocking them down with the blight. So there's a blight that's soil borne that the water splashing up from uh, the raindrops uh, tends to inoculate the plants and cause them to crash. Um, they can tend to overtake the bed. You can see this one is quite prolific. Um, so you wanna just be aware of that as you create your space. Summer squash, another climbing variety. Here, another um, green tunnel uh, that can support the uh, squash. A variety of different squash varieties, both in the horizontal space and the vertical space. Patty pan, red curry, cube of butter. Acorn squash is a, a winter squash. Uh, summer crook, zucchini, delicata. And you could even do things like Hubbard or pumpkin that would be more um, storage varieties. Cucumber, so the couple of varieties we've used are Calypso, which is a, um, a pickling cucumber, and Market More, uh, which is a more of a slicer. And then there's the English variety, which we've tried as well. And they do well in vertical spaces. So again, using that upward climbing space, several different options here available. <clears throat> so using a, a curved hoop um, in one bed, an upper picture, and then uh, a triangular as well as a, a directly vertical space. <laughs> Garlic. Garlic is a seasonal one that you can actually take advantage of getting going in the fall. Plant it in the fall, harvest it midsummer. Uh, you can see that this grow bed on the lower left is actually made out of brick and is about waist high, so it's easy to access. You don't have to bend over in doing this one. The other ones are more close to ground level. Uh, so the depth of the bed is one thing that you can choose. Um, one thing that is uh, intriguing about the the one on the lower right with the garlic and the cinder block one is those are durable materials. Uh, wood will last for a number of years, but will eventually decay and need to be replaced. Um, but the other two are essentially indestructible. Leaf lettuce, a favorite for grow beds. In fact, you can see multiple varieties being grown together. 
Uh, the lower right, you can see that this is probably done on the shoulder seasons as well. Keeps the bunnies out with the bunny fence there, but um, the, the glass pane coverings can create a little microclimate there and allow them to grow on through uh, the cold seasons. So that's something that you can add as an addendum to your grow beds quite easily. Carrots. Some that we've used are purple haze, which is a purple variety, uh, bolero, bengal, a rainbow is, is multiple colors in, uh, in a pack. Um, but the, again, the advantage of a, a raised bed is that you have uh, predetermined soil, uh, rock-free, that uh, will allow them to have straight um, root systems that are nice to harvest. So one of the interesting things is that the original carrots, uh, which I learned from a book called Eating on the Wild Side, uh, were more the rainbow variety and purple. Uh, but it was actually the House of Orange in the Netherlands that uh, commissioned the orange carrot in honor of the House of Orange. And so today we have carries over that and most carrots that people eat are the orange variety or varieties of orange. Uh, and it also turns out that the House of Orange was instrumental in the success of the Reformation in that they sheltered and, and hid uh, the reformers who were being persecuted. So an interesting um, perspective and historical uh, perspective of the orange carrot. Onions. So we've used uh, the sweet Walla Walla sweets, um, and then you can do the storage varieties. So the sweets are not going to last through the winter, but uh, are a nice addition to your culinary experience. Storage, uh, Copra and Red Zeppelin are the two that we've used. Uh, they suggest uh, soaking sets uh, 24 hours prior to setting. Uh, you can do it in water or give them a jump start by actually soaking them that period of time in a compost tea that you've collected from your compost pile. Uh, then you set them out and the way to make sure that you get your large bulbs is that as they grow, uh, the ones on the right are just forming their bulbs, but as they begin to bulb, clear the dirt away so just the roots are in the soil. That allows the bulb freedom to expand and grow into a uh, nice size. Kale. You can do curly kale, uh, red and white Russian dinosaur kale, and there's other varieties in addition to that, white kale. Uh, the lower bed has multiple varieties of kale in the same bed. Um, the, the darker red, of course, have more pigments, and the more pigment you have, <clears throat> the more nutritious it is. Uh, the dinosaur kale is the one that's predominant in the upper bed, along with uh, a Russian red and some, some uh, chard that's going to, sit, going to seed. But kale is one that can go through the winter quite well, tolerates the winter, uh, goes to seed in its second season typically. Um, and it is actually a very uh, healthy reseeder. It'll reseed itself. Swiss chard. Rainbow chard on the upper left. Uh, just a, a red variety down below. Very uh, deep green. And uh, that, that grows well in, in raised beds, as you can see here. Beets. There's a number of variety of beets. Beets are another root crop. Some that uh, we've used are Early Wonder, Tall Top, Bull's Blood, those are some red varieties. Chiaga or Candy Stripe, Bullseye, so that's the one that you see with the concentric stripes down below. Golden Beets are also present, um, but they can be juiced, they can be canned, they can be sliced, they can be used the tops. Use the tops first. They have the same nutritional value as the tuber, uh, and then you can also use the tuber. Typically go to seed in the second season, but sometimes we'll go to seed in the first season. We've had some of that happening this year. Uh, notice the, the, the green leafy on the beet set over here is actually uh, a weed called lamb's quarters, which is very, very high in calcium and is a, a weed that's edible, uh, wild spinach essentially. That and pigweed can both be eaten in the same way. Strawberries. So you can have, you have your June bearers and then you have your ever bearing. Uh, Rainier and Shuxon June bearing are some local varieties that, that do well in Washington state. Uh, Tristar is the one that we've had the best success with from an ever bearing standpoint. Um, they tend to not have the runners nearly as much as the June bearings. 
and so uh, need to be replanted periodically. Another variety is seascape, which we used and while having large berries, was not um, near as tasteful as the trishar. Um, so these are one that are helpful to have in a raised bed in that it helps to contain them. Potatoes. You can do lots of different varieties of potatoes, finger potatoes, gold potatoes, uh, purple, russets, uh, but a nice deep bed <clears throat> is uh, helpful and uh, being able to raise that dirt up around them to keep them covered so that they don't uh, have any green uh, skin developing with light um, access to them. You can see the lower bed, they've put the straw around to kind of uh, take the place of, of soil as they put tubers into the, into the straw area. Um, but a raised bed is, is helpful uh, in uh, growing potatoes, a great combination. Parsnips. So parsnips uh, can be uh, grown in uh, raised beds, another root crop that penetrates deep in the soil. Nice to not have rocks. You can see that there's one upper that must have hit a soil clod or a rock and that split it into multiple fingers. Leeks, kind of a long growing uh, crop that's a uh, winter harvest, fall harvest uh, crop uh, in the onion family. And uh, nicely arrayed here in different um, tiers in the lower bed with it looks like uh, maybe parsley or um, another herb and then uh, something that is being protected from rabbits. So a nice little wire cage over, over that to protect it from being munched on. Radishes. Radishes are a crop that you can successively plant <clears throat> spring and then on through the through the summer in small batches. If you have them all at once, you'll have more than you can use. Uh, but if you successively seed them, they will continue to mature throughout the season, um, as can be done with, with a variety of other crops. Um, but radishes is, are very conducive to that. Bok choy, another one that is good for successive planting, if you, especially if you like a particular stage of their growth. Um, you can see the straw and the mulch put around them to help keep the weeds down and also to add nutrition, um, but a, a great raised bed variety. <clears throat> Notice that most beds are not very wide, uh, three feet at max, uh, it, basically with the ease of reaching to the middle uh, and being be able to access um, all sides of the, of the raised bed. Celery. If it has its own bed, you can water it appropriately and treat it the way it needs to be treated um, in the whole area so that it can uh, produce celery uh, the way you like it. This one actually has um, been spread uh, spread out quite a bit uh, and oftentimes they'll heap up mulch around it to, to blanch it and keep it into a cl cluster. Arugula, nice spicy lettuce mix uh, variety <clears throat> and uh, adds a dimension, uh, depth of dimension to any salad. So arugula is a good one. Cilantro, for those who appreciate it, some don't appreciate it because it tends to taste like soap in their mouth, <clears throat> but it has some great properties. If you enjoy it, um, it's uh, great at helping the body eliminate heavy metals, um, particularly in the seed form actually as the, the herb form too, great for salsa additions and soups and stews. It has a really pretty flower too. Um, the seeds, if it goes to seed, don't worry, you can collect that and grind it into what we know as coriander. Um, and that can be used as a spice um, or as a supplement, uh, again, to help aid heavy metal uh, elimination from the body. A whole variety of herbs, you can see the lower right, they've sectioned them off into little cubes to have a little herb garden. <clears throat> you can do larger areas of herbs if you wish. Uh, lots of varieties of basil, uh, sage, uh, but mint is one that's gonna be an easy spreader. Um, thyme and oregano. Oregano is a, a wonderful one. There's creeping varieties as well as um, uh, bush varieties that can grow up. And most, uh, most herbs are perennial, not all, uh, depending on your growing season. Uh, basil is one you'd have to annually replant but there are many that are, are perennial. <clears throat>